Well, welcome to the Time Farm Sporting Life preview for Sunday, the Qatar Prix de la de Triomphe Europe's great all age clash in Paris Longchamp. Joined by Ben Linfoot and Cayman Clark to take a look at the great race. Let's start doing so by looking at the Time Farm ratings. And Cayman, just explain how this has happened. We've got the Time Farm ratings in front. We've seen Hookham beat Westover in the King George at Ascot. Westover 141, Hookham 140. Yeah, it just comes down to our weight for age scale, Dave. Um... The way it's structured in Time Form Towers, uh, Westover got a pound weight for age in that King George, um, and obviously he finished upsides Hookham. So when that's all factored into the weight adjusted ratings, he comes out a pound top. Now I know me and Ben Linfoot next to me have dis a bit of a disagreement as to who's the better horse, I think. But um, it's it's a cracking renewal, this isn't it? He obviously got that King George. Pair. Obviously, Westover, a former Irish Derby winner as well. You've got the unbeaten Ace Impact, who, uh, who heads the betting French Derby winner. You've got through seven seas the Japanese Raider. I know they're desperate. They've been desperate to win it for years, haven't they? Um, Bay Bridge Champion Stakes winner. He was very much on the comeback trail last time. We've got a Ledger winner in Continuous. We'll touch on him later. He's probably short enough in the betting now, isn't he? He's got a bit to prove there. Um, and then you've got a German derby winner at the bottom in Fantastic Moon as well. There's there's plenty to go at. Feed the Flames not even on those ratings. That's how much he has to find. Um, the King George form looks the key piece of form, doesn't it? Um, but it's it's a brilliant arc. I think it's the best arc has been for a while. Your sweet on Westover. We haven't got the video of the uh, of the um, Ascot race at King George. We have got the video of the Coronation Cup, which is second to Emily Up John. Here at Epsom, how worried are you that this is also going to be susceptible to something that can quicken like she did this day? That is the negative, isn't it? Because he, he's such a strong galloper, Westover, isn't he? That so I'm hopeful that this is going to be run at a well enough pace that it's going to draw stamina into the equation over something with that little bit of a turn of speed. Um, after this, he came out and landed the odds, short odds at St. Clue, didn't he? And, and obviously, he ran an absolute cracker in that King George. And he's just a better horse than last year. He was sixth in this last year, but you see the size of him there, he was always going to be a better four-year-old. I think the very soft ground blunted his speed. Now, the official is soft at the time of recording at Longchamp, but from our recordings of the ground in France, we tend to be a little bit quicker than what their descriptions is on the whole. So it's probably borderline good to soft, good ground currently with, um, with no rain due. So we're not going to get one of them heavy ground slog of an arc like we got a couple of years ago, I scoop this is going to be... We've had a few of them in recent years, it's nice to see a, a more of a good ground arc. Mm. Now your pro Hookham has given a hint of that and people will see on on site, he won that King George. Now Owen Bevo was going to make the point, he's a quicker horse this year, he's come back from his injury, a quicker horse. Was it evident of this in the video foot coverage we've got here of him winning the Brigadier Gerard at, at Sandown, he beat a derby in the desert crown, or something we haven't seen since. Absolutely, Dave. Yeah, I mean, this is uh, obviously over 10 furlongs, and it comes on the back of being off for 356 days. So as good as Owen Burroughs is at priming one for a target after a long time off, he was entitled to be rusty this day, and he simply wasn't. He was fantastic in, in wearing down desert crown to, to win this race. Over a trip shot of his best, but... Look, I think he has got quicker as he's got older. Obviously, he ran in the ledger as a three-year-old, and uh, he has form over further than a mile and a half. But he's got gears as Hookham, and um, I think he's the best horse in the race. Can we touch on the draw, Scoops? He's drawn 14 or 15, and obviously he's a horse that tends to be ridden forward. Do you think Crowley's going to do a Frankie on Golden Horn? And he could do. Wide, or I'm just, the, the main worry I had with Hookham, he's a great horse, don't get me wrong, is that draw... If he gets too far back, this is a race where I've just gone through the last 10 or so renewals and you don't tend to come from too far back by Trevor was a bit of a monster and I'd, I'd, that'll be my concern. It's the one concern, but he has drifted a little bit on the back of it and mm. I think he's a bet because I think Jim Crowley's got options. He can either do the Frankie Dittori golden horn route and stay out wide, as Jim did himself in the Sky Bet E-Bar a few years ago for the John Gosden trained Shadwell horse. Begins with an M. That begins with an M. In, that's the one, in yeah. 2016. <laughs> and he, he stayed wide that day at York from a, a horror draw really out in 18 and, and, and came through to win the race. And he, he has got that in his locker, Jim Crowley. He can think outside the box and, and wonder what to do with this horse. He could drop him in as well. Uh, you can see him being fifth or sixth on, on the first turn. And I think that'll be absolutely fine. And it's not, a huge field arc is it 15 runners and I think it's probably been overplayed a little bit and I think when you break it down to simple terms 
he's got the best form at this trip in the race. Let's talk, um, Kevin, about Ace Impact. He's the horse we know has got a Group 1 turn of foot. We saw it when he won the French Derby. Is he going to be able to be as effective over a mile and a half, trying it for the first time on Sunday? That is the key question, yeah. Um, on pedigree, I know he's, he's a cracksman, but if you look at the damn side of the pedigree, they're all up to a mile and a quarter winners, and he is a horse with a lot of speed, isn't he? He was a bit keen in that French Derby. I've just watched it before we came down, and yes, he's got a very, very good turn of foot. He's set on matters instantly. A bit of a penalty kick last time at Deauville in his prep run. We, we know these French trainers, this is how they tend to bring them along. They'll give them a prep run and bring them back for the arc. And look, he's, he's done nothing wrong, but he, was, he wasn't he was exactly a short price in that in that French derby, was he? He was about 9-1, to one, I think. And Yes, he was impressive. Do I think he should be as short as 3-1 to one against some real top top class proven older horses? Probably not. Yes, this does favour the three-year-olds, especially on on decent ground it seems to be but um, I think he could potentially be more of a Vedeni type who very sort of a flashy stayer isn't he with a bit of turn of speed I just don't know if he's going to be as effective over this trip um, that would be my concern and, and it's his price for me Skip, I think it? if there's one horse in the field that could blow this arc apart and win by four lengths or more it's ace impact mm. I, I share Kieran's concerns about the trip just because of his style of racing. He can, he, he's been keen over 10 and that it would just worry me if he doesn't settle in the early stages. It's a real stiff first half mile at Longchamp. It's a long way home in that home straight. It's just on my mind at the prices. Should we touch on Feed the Flame? Just touching on that French derby form. Obviously he was fourth. He was sent off a much shorter price. He just seems to me, Scoop, like he's, a bit, he's been a bit sluggish from the stalls his last few starts. And again, I'd be just a little bit worried he gets a bit too far back. He was apparently blowing quite hard after his latest start. Um, but that would be my concern for him. Yeah, really strong stayer, but I think he has to improve a fair bit to, uh, to triple these, even on that really good Grand Prix de Paris Fall. Anybody who watches that French Derby and thinks any of those in behind him will beat Ace Impact. I don't know what they've mm. been drinking, but plenty do, including fans of Continuous. Did you know, Ben Linfoot, that no horse has ever won the St. Ledger and gone on to win the arc? I did know that, Dave. It's very famous, isn't it? It's, it's the one of the, now, we haven't got the footage of Continuous improving again at Doncaster to win that St. Ledger two weeks ago. We have got him winning over this trip at a mile and a half at York uh, in the Skybet Great Voltage. Where does he sit in the, for you, Scoop, on the shortlist for this? Well, he's second in the betting, and I think that is um, not where I'd have him. I'd have him a bit of a bigger price, to be honest. Uh, on this farm, on this Great Voltage farm, he's got... A, a hell of a lot to find and he has on his ledger farm as well and it was only two weeks ago he won at Doncaster um, I don't think it's a, as, as bad a renewal as the recent ledger win had been 6-1 to one for the arc mm -hmm. um, listen he's, he's, he's clearly improving and he's trip in O'Brien so he's got to be respected and I do actually think he'll run well but I couldn't back him to win it at 6-1 to one. He's beaten 15 and a half lengths in that French derby I mean, it's clearly a different horse now, he is, isn't yeah, it? It's yeah. a bit, he is. I, I genuinely think the way, if Ace Impact stays, I think, like you said, he's the one who could blow the race apart. He does look short, um, continuous. Need to not Bay Bridge, Kevin. We we saw him in action at Kempton, not the usual way. Well, it has been due to stepping stone in the past, it, and this race has by yeah, yeah. the Enabled team. This was to find out about the mile and a half him. Is this conclusive proof he's going to be as effective at it as he is at 10 furlongs? I think it could be even better. He, he was really impressive here, I thought. Yes, it was a bit of a penalty kick, but... It was the way he's really settled, set, settled matters, and he always struck me as a mile and a half horse. And you know, it's not a surprise. Connections took him until five, five years of age to do it because he's been so effective at a mile and a quarter. But I really like how we saw things out. It's just a case of is he good enough? Fourteen to one. I mean, if you can get first force, maybe first five places somewhere, he, he'll give you a good run for his money. He's got a nice draw in six. He, he's going to be ridden up with the pace. He's it's just a case of is he quite good enough to win this I'll probably say no are you in agreement there Scoop yeah uh, massively unexposed at the trip um, and, and that immediately draws you to him doesn't it for Sir Michael Stout was such a good patient handler I just I just wonder if he's good enough selection time the Qatar pre delight de Triomphe 2023 Ben Linfoot the winner is hook him for me Dave I think he's, he's the best horse in the race he's got the best form at the trip and he's thriving and I know he's got that six-year-old stat to, to overcome but hey listen how many of those three and four-year-olds were retired in, in the past that would have probably won the arc at six I think it's a little bit of a quirk more than anything and uh, hopefully he can be the first one to do it on Sunday. And Kevin? Yeah Westover for me head-to-head -head, it, 
speaking of heads to heads, it was a matter of heads, wasn't it, <laughs> Ascot? But um, I do think that is the key piece of form here, and I do think they'll come to the fore. And um, yeah, one six to one, one seven to one, and they'd be the two I'd focus on. But like I said, the draw put me off fucking Westover's drawn one, which it could be a negative, couldn't it? It could be a bit crowded, but um, yeah, big ride for Rob Hornby and he's the one for me, Dev. I think they'll finish almost alongside each other again, but three lengths of drift of Ace Impact in Sudley's Hard. But it's a fascinating <laughs> contest. Undercard, some really good racing elsewhere. I want one horse from you both elsewhere on that Sunday Pavilion Longchamp card. Kevin, you go first. Yeah, I'll put up Al Husson in the Prix de l'Opera. She obviously got a very good ride when she won a Nassau at Goodwood. Um, that form, I know it was a bit of a muddling affair, but that form was pretty solid, isn't it? He had uh, Blue Rose, Sen and Nashua in behind. Um, and I don't think she stayed in the Yorkshire Oaks. She's never struck me as a man, man half filly. She ran all right. She was weakened out of it late on. That looks a strong piece of form. Warm hearts, Frank, that since. Um, she's overpriced, I think, around eight to one. The ground drying would help her. I think she's tailor-made for the filly and mares race at Santa Anita if Connections decide to go there afterwards. Uh, but yeah, I'll be having a few quid each way on her at about eight to one in the Prix de l'Opera. Great stuff. We're going head to head again, Dave. Oh, here we oh, go. It's just you can't, you can't help <laughs> you yourself. You're copying me with uh, your Cambridge team. Uh, yeah, we're going with Lumiere Rock in the L'Opera uh, for for Joseph O'Brien, Saxon Warrior Philly. Um, I thought the cheek pieces improved her massively. Last, it was impressive. Last actually. time in the Blandford Stakes, I thought that was a pretty good group too with the Curry. The Blanford Stakes, and she ran away with it by three lengths in in, in the uh, cheap pieces. And um, if they have the desired effect again, I think she's the one they have to beat. I do urge you too to read Richard Farr, his column on Sporting Life, at Native American who runs in the opening, Jean-Luc Lagardère. He admits he's probably got about £25, £30 to find with the principals in that race, but he thinks there's a good chunk of that improvement to come. So yeah, check out Richard's column on Sporting Life and all the big race previews across the platform. Thank you for watching and best of luck with your own bets in Sunday's Ark.